Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage three of Dolphin A 2022. Now 170 kilometers, about 105 miles in length. And it's gonna be one of the first stages here where we get into the real mountains proper because it's gonna have the final six kilometers is gonna climb up and it can be a little dip with about 1.2 kilometers to go. It's gonna dip down and then it's gonna go up with about 150 meters to go. So more or less a summit finish, but this is the first day into the mountains. And so when you get into these first stages of the mountains and they're not massively big, you don't have six of them in a row, a lot of the field is about even on a stage like this. And so when you're sitting on the couch watching the race as an old ex-pro like myself, you're not exactly certain how this stage is gonna play out. Now we have another card on the table, it's called Yambo Visma. Yambo Visma's coming in here with seven guys, but they have three leaders, Jonas Vinigo, Primoz Roglic, and of course, Wout Van Art, who can put himself into the yellow jersey again after losing it on yesterday's stage two. But the question is, when we get on this final climb, this final six kilometers to go on today's stage, who are going to be the domestiques, the super domestiques, and then who's going to help out Wout Van Art if that is the way Yumbo Visma want to go is another stage win with Wout Van Aert and putting them back in yell. So keep that in mind when you're watching this stage. Now when the cameras come on, it's about 67 kilometers to go. The break up front has six riders up there and four are B&B &B Hotel. Pierre Roland, who's wearing the KOM jerseys up there, and his three teammates. Schoenberg, it looks solid. The other two teammates, Miguel Henderman and Alexi Goujard. Those two riders are doing the bulk of the work, what it looks like, and what the GCN commentators have talked about earlier in the stage. I didn't get to see how much work they did, but with four B&B &B hotels, what's being relayed to me from the commentators, Brian Smith, is that the two riders on the front from B&B &B are doing the majority of the pulling, leaving the other four riders to do the last 50 kilometers of today's race. That's because when you look at the profile again, it's basically going up almost 70 kilometers all the way up to the finish of today's stage. So that's going to leave some more fresher legs is what B&B &B are hotels hoping for with Schoenberger and of course with Pierre Roland having a little bit more recovery before this final climb starts here with six kilometers to go. Now, those two B&B hotel riders will drop off just over 50 kilometers to go. Thomas Champion from Kofidis, he'll be the next rider to drop off. So that's leaving three riders up front, and they got about a two-minute, just under two-minute gap to the peloton being led by Total Energies. Now, Total Energies, Vieira most took the jersey yesterday, and he's got his whole squad on the front, and just behind them is Jumbo Visma lined up. Those two teams will start working together to bring this time gap back down. And now this breakaway of three riders up front, they got basically no hope, no hope left of winning today's stage three. With 15 kilometers to go, Yumbo Visma's Christophe Laporte, we'll see him coming out the back here. He did solid work throughout today's stage, and he's done work on stage one and stage two here at Dauphiné. So no shame here. Chris Harper, he's the next rider up front. He's doing a solid job pulling as hard as he can. And now we'll start seeing the super domestiques here for Yumbo Visma half starting to go to work. Now, just under 15 kilometers to go when Chris Harper is at the front. There's a little bit of battling starting to go on. We'll see the peloton a little bit curb to curb here with different teams fighting for, superior, for, for the superior position here when we get ready to start these final climbs. EF Education do a solid job of trying to take over the front, but they won't hold it too long because Yumbo Visma's looking solid. Again, another battle with Enos coming to the front, trying to get dominance here with the end of the stage three, getting ready to start. Enos can't do it. Yumbo Visma take back over control of the peloton with Tis Benut on the front. Now Tis Benut's pulling. He'll start the final climb with six kilometers to go as the breakaway is just up the front with about a 20 second gap and they're going to get caught shortly into this final climb. Now, Tis Benut stays on the front for about two or three kilometers total pulling, and he'll pull off early on this final six kilometer climb, and that'll open up the gate for Steven Kreiswick to get on the front. Steven Kreiswick will start pulling hard. The field is still pretty large with about 50, 60 guys back there, and we're going to see Filippo Ghana pull the plug. Remember, it's a time trial stage tomorrow. I'm sure he came here just with hopes of winning that TT stage tomorrow. You see him already stuffing his mouth, trying to get the recovery for tomorrow's individual time trial, 31 kilometers here. Now when we go back up front, it's the first attack on this final climb. It's Bike Exchange Tis Gabu Gourmet up there that's throwing in the first attack. It doesn't live long because behind it, it's Quick Step Remy Cavagna throwing in attack. Now, this is what I've been waiting for here since they announced the roster here for Yumbo Visma. 
what rider's going to start cover? There's only going to be three left because on the front with Steven Kreiswick, his form's not exact, exactly exceptional here to his standards at Dauphiné. He only did about a one-kilometer pull, and when the tax started, it's Steven Kreiswick that falls off. That means you're left with three Jumbo Visma riders, and they're all the leaders, right? Jonas Vinigo, Primoz Roglic, and Wout Van Aert. With that attack from the quick step rider, Remy Cavagna, the first Jumbo Visma rider to cover the move is Jonas Vinigo. There we go. Now we're starting to see the pecking order here at Dolphin A on stage three. Jonas Vinigo covers the move. We'll see Remy Cavagna look back over his shoulder. He knows he's got company, so he's going to ease off the pedal. With 2.5 kilometers to go, this 6-kilometer climb starts getting really stiff, and it's going up to 8%. At this point in time, we see Viermos, the yellow jersey wearer here on stage three. He's hurt and he's coming out the back and the yellow jersey is going to change hands at the end of this stage three, one way or another. We're gonna see a crash in the back from EF Education, Sean Quinn. He goes down, that'll take away any chance of him getting a result here on stage three. Up front, Jonas Vinigo is still on the front, setting the tempo. Now it's not blazing fast. The group there is solid, it's smaller, but it's still 25, 30 guys. Jonas Vinigo's on the front, we'll see him get Get on the radio, and I believe Walt Van Aert's talking back to him, telling, giving him the green light to keep the pace kind of hot. Jonas Vinigo staying steady on the pedals. On his wheel, Teo Gagenhart from Enios is lined up there. Ben O'Connor, AG2R. They were the guys who closed the gap to Remy Cavagna back there, and now he's sitting third wheel. Ben O'Connor looking fine right now on stage three here at Dolphinet. Just behind Ben O'Connor is going to be the quick step rider, Bagioli. And then behind Bagioli is going to be the duo of Jumbo Visma's Primos Roglic and Wout Van Aert. So at this point in time, we're finally starting to see how the tactics are going to play out amongst the three leaders here at Jumbo Visma. It's clearly Jonas Vinigo is going to try to control the peloton. Primos Roglic is going to look after Wout Van Aert if he can keep his legs good. Now, we get a little bit further up this climb with about 1.5 kilometers, 1.6 kilometers to go. It's EF Education's Chavez that throws in a big acceleration. With that acceleration, Jonas Vinigo's falling off the front and dropping back. At this point in time, when I see Jonas Vinigo getting dropped on an 8% climb, you got to ask yourself, how good is he going to be later on when we get into the big mountain stages? With that attack, we're going to see Ben O'Connor throw in the next attack, and Primos Ruggles, Jumbo Visma, is on his wheel directly. Primos is looking solid here, the best of all the Yumbo Visma riders. With that attack from Ben O'Connor, you'll see him look back just at the top. It's Primos Roglic he's looking at. Primos Roglic will start taking the lead here to try to calm things down. When we look way back in the group there being led by Primos Roglic, you'll see the duel of Jonas Vinigo and Wout Van Aert. At this point in time, Jonas is magical. He's going to go back there, pick up Wout Van Aert just as the hill starts crest and it starts to dip down with about one kilometer to go. It's Jonas Vinigo and sprint leader here for Jumbo Visma with Walt Van Aert locked onto his wheel. Jonas Vinigo will get, get his race leader up to the front with about 900 meters to go. He'll pull all the way down the, down the descent into about 150 meters to go and then Walt Van Aert will launch off his wheel. Only problem is, Walt Van Aert's got some competition here on stage three because just in front of him on the left side of the road is going to be Victor Lefay from Cofidis. Victor Lefay from Cofidis has got the lead here with about 100 meters to go, 75 meters to go. Wout Van Aert starting to accelerate, and they're getting closer side by side. Wout Van Aert's doing a little peek to the left side of the road, 50 meters to go. They're closer. Wout Van Aert looks like he's starting to take the lead. 40 meters to go. Wout Van Aert has the lead, but let me back the film up just a little bit because at 75 meters to go, when all the action was happening at front, it's Davi Godou, the French rider from FDJ, who's slicing up through the group behind. We'll see him just barely pinch through the movie star rider of Matteo Jorgensen there. He'll clear through, and as Wout Van Aert is taking the lead with 40 meters to go, Davi De Godou has a clean open air on the right side of the road. Now, we, with that lead there of Walt Van Aert at about 30 meters to go, he's got a solid lead. 25, it's looking even better. At 15 meters, he's looking solid like he's got a shot to win. At 10 meters to go, he looks like he's got it wrapped up in the bag. And at 2 meters to go, Walt Van Aert sits up. Only problem is, he's been looking left and on the right side, Davi De Godou, who throws his bike with 1 meter to go. 
wins today stage three by half a wheel over Wout Van Aert. Now, this has got to be a hard hit to the pride of Wout Van Aert because he suffered going up this climb. His teammates did a great job of controlling the whole stage here with this last six kilometer climb. And then with the with the celebration at two meters to go, losing today's stage along with the bonus seconds here on stage three that will still put him into the race leader's jersey when this stage is done. But you got to believe when you're Yamba Visma and you look at yesterday's stage, where they gave away a chance at the win on stage two. And then today with celebration with only two meters to go to lose by half a bike length, got to be a hard hit here for Wout Van Art. A lesson learned though, if you're only looking left, you better sprint all the way to the line because the right side was open air. Davi De Godou, who celebrated right after the line, but didn't celebrate before the line. He was too busy throwing his bike. He celebrates in big style to take a great win here for FDJ. Now, he gave an interview earlier in the stage about 50 kilometers ago, and he talked about that he had good form. Today was going to be a stage where we get to see who's riding good and who's not. And he said, why not ride for GC? That's what I'm built for, so that's what I'm going to do. Well, clearly today with this first stage win here on stage three of Dolphin A, Davi Godou has got to be a player here on the general classification. Now, when we dissect today's race, Yambo Visma anyways, I want to point one thing out. Whenever you get into these first mountain stages, it's still very difficult to see where the climbers are. I know personally, I never liked the first stage unless it had six big mountains or at least four or five hard climbs before you get to the final because everybody's legs are still fresh from those first days of racing. So Yamba Visma, when you look at Tispanut, he didn't look great. He did some solid pulling, but only for about three kilometers. When you look at Steven Kreiswick, though, he's the one that I really want to talk about because he was only able to pull for one kilometer, and it was the bike exchange tack of Gourmet that sent Steven Kreiswick out the back. Now, Jonas Vinigo, he pulled for some solid work on the front, but when you look at the size of that group, 8% climb while he's pulling, it's not like he has his spectacular form from last year's 2021 Tour de France. So Yumbo Visma have to be a little bit worried going forward. Now, when you look at Wal Van Art, clearly, like he said earlier before Dolphin A started, he has been practicing more on his speed training for sprints and winning stages in the sprint versus his climbing. And when you look at today's stage, normally he would have blazed over this climb and no one could have hurt him at all. And instead, with those attacks from Chavez and Ben O'Connor sent him to the back of the group, and it was only his loyal lieutenant there, Jonas Vinigo, that brought him back up to the front just in time to play for the stage win. And of course, that catastrophic sitting up with two meters to go lost Jambo Visma the stage win. But one, one sure card. Primoz Roglic, right? That's why we always know he's the leader. He's always on form. He looked absolutely solid here. But one thing's for certain, when we get into the final mountain stages coming up this weekend, Yambo Visma do not look as solid in the mountains as we thought they would be at the beginning of stage one here at Dolphin A. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. We're getting into the meat of the Dolphin Day. Tomorrow's time trial, 31 kilometers. It's going to be a big effect on the general classification. Primos Roglic looks good. I think he'll be in the GC lead when, it, when tomorrow's said and done. Wout Van Aert could possibly hold on to it, though, for certain. And Filippo Ghana, we saw him already putting calories in at the beginning of this last final climb here on Stage 3. So look for those three riders to put on a magical display in tomorrow's individual time trial. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next edition real soon.